Hey guys, Joe here. Thanks very much for joining me tonight. The opponent wins the roll. So I'm going to be on the draw, but this looks like a very solid draw. Two lands, two curse catchers, two lords, and a harbinger. Very reasonable merfolk opening seven. Looks like the opponent is thinking about it. Mulling it over. Okay, so both keeping. Let's see what the opponent has. Tapped breeding pool. Infect, maybe? Birds of Paradise. Hmm. Land is pretty decent, I think. Um, let's see. Not quite sure what this is yet. Some kind of Bant deck, probably. Maybe Kiki Chord? So, I'm going to be able to bounce a bird at least with this Harbinger. I think it might be time to just start pushing the Lords. Uh, looks like the opponent is on the back foot. Pretty slow opening. We'll attack uh, if the Lord gets pathed. So be it. Okay, he takes two. Already at 16, and now 15 after the fetch. Very curious to see what uh, what they're playing here. Windswept Heath indicates that it is in fact banned, or rather at least green, blue, and white. It might also play a fourth color, maybe even a fifth color. Okay, so Path to Exile uh, after damage. I never understand that. Well, as I mentioned, I'm going to get to bounce the bird probably. Oh, here it is, Bant, uh, Bant Eldrazi. Thought not Seer. Uh, we've got a lot of good cards in our hand. Let's see what he's going to choose to take. That Eldrazi Temple was pretty well timed. Reveal hand to the snake doctor. <clears throat> All right, Lord's got to go. I exile. All right, well, that was a very nice draw. I think I'm going to... Let's see. I'll start by dismembering uh, Thought Knots here. That's going to let me draw a card. And it might influence what my land drop is this turn. OK, so that guy's dead. I'm going to draw a card. Doesn't affect the land drop. Um, I'm going to go ahead and attack. Opponent takes one. We will play the Wanderine hub. Revealing the Curse Catcher and playing a Curse Catcher, and we'll play a second Curse Catcher. The opponent does know about the Harbinger. He does not know about the Master of Waves. He's already used one Path to Exile on my first Lord. Hopefully he doesn't have any more of those in his hand. He does have lands. Maybe it's time for a Reality Smasher. There he is. All right, if he attacks with that guy, I think I'll probably bounce him next turn. Although I may just play the Master of, the, the master of Waves. The opponent knows I have the Harbinger, so he seems to actually be th uh, thinking about holding back this Reality Smasher. But in the end, decides against it, and I'll go down to 11. So a 2-drop would be nice here, so I can play out two 2-drops. Two that's actually quite nice. Let's see. I think I'll start by attacking with my three curse catchers. Okay, so the idea here is just set the opponent back on tempo as much as possible while setting up a gigantic master of waves.
he's thinking about it. Doesn't like it one bit. I have to say, I love Harbinger in Modern. There's been a lot of talk on the uh, MTGS. I'm waiting. He has told me to wait, so I'm going to wait. Maybe he's going to try to make me discard something for a uh, Reality Smasher. But I've been, uh, I've been through this before. Reality Smasher only cares about. So explaining to the opponent that Harbinger, uh, it's his ability. So bouncing the birds, let's do it to it. Opponent is, we're both at 11 here. I have a feeling the opponent is probably uh, going to go with Reality Smasher again this turn. Has exactly enough mana for it. Sometimes people in Cockatrice go to the untap and they uh, realize they wanted to fetch. But if they haven't even gone to their draw step yet, then of course it's still the end of turn as far as I'm concerned. So all sorts of island walk between these two islands here. If I draw... Um, Oh, so this is his... Did he draw his turn? Okay. So I guess maybe he f fetched after he drew? No, no, no. He drew and then played Reality Smasher. And chose not to attack. One, two, th one, two three, four, five. Okay. That's fair. Hmm. So... I think I'm going to play a Master, get um, eight tokens, and attack with all of my guys. Sure, why not? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And uh, let's see, is it time to start attacking? I think it is time to start attacking. Opponent can block and then take five, or can we just sit back? I mean, obviously it's going to be overkill next turn. If he draws into a path, that's going to stink. Um, let's see. If I attack with everybody, uh, he's going to block one of the Harbingers, take 5, go down to 10. If he then uh, paths my guy, um, can play any creature basically and bash my face with Reality Smasher, I think it's going to be prudent just to wait one turn. I don't like the attacks into this Reality Smasher. The opponent didn't seem to like this Master of Waves. Hopefully he doesn't have uh, another path in his hand, but I'm sure he plays four of them, so not too unlikely. If he attacks with this thing, I might just throw five elementals in front of him. Oh, all right, game two. So if you guys um, saw my previous upload against Bant Eldrazi, uh, I don't bring in anything. Counter spells aren't good. Doesn't play artifacts. Uh, Tidebinder, there's no green creatures or red creatures. And uh, he doesn't care about his graveyard. So we're set up pretty well in the main deck. You saw Dismember did a lot of work against the Thought Knots here. That was pretty great. Uh, Echoing Truth, just good interaction. Bounce uh, multiple guys. Doesn't kill um, Matter Reshaper. Important. Uh, so he doesn't get that card advantage uh, on the die dying trigger from Matter Reshaper. Harbinger is fantastic. Uh, Kira can protect my guys. So as we saw in game one, Merfolk are pretty well set up to deal with Bant Eldrazi. Games 1, 2, and 3. No sideboard adjustments necessary. I mean, I imagine if you played main deck spell pierces, you might want to take them out, since they probably only have like four non-creature spells in the whole deck. Although, they play Ancient Stirrings. So maybe eight. Mm. This is a little bit stinky here. All right, so they don't have 
hand disruption like Jund or Abzan, if I draw a single blue source, uh, I'm going to sort of be able to go nuts here. I'll be able to kill the turn one birds if I want to. Um, it's good interaction, really good interaction. Uh, I can play Silver Gill off of any land. 50% chance. I think, I think I need to mulligan here. Alright, this is better. I'll keep this. Alright, that's great. We are all set. Aldrazi Temple, go. Spreading Seas would have been good for that, but as it stands, still feeling pretty good about this hand. And e uh, Muta Vault would be really good. I think that might be setting up something like a turn 4 kill. No, I think we need a little bit more. Since we're not doing any damage until turn 3. Tapped Breeding Pool, go. Another land. Not too incredible. I'm going to um, reveal the Silver Gill. Cast the Silver Gill. And I'll reveal Mera Rejury. Since I'm probably going to cast that guy next. Alright, come on, Merfolk. Mm, at least we're drawing through the land. Don't want to hit any more lands here. Even Mutavolt is not that amazing right now. So we had a pretty good mulligan, but uh, just hitting a lot of lands after this first Master of the Pearl Trident. Okay, 4 mana means Thought Not Seer. Imagine he's going to ship the uh, Island Walker, since he does have a breeding pool in play. But Maririgiri is a 3 drop. So, alright, exiling the Master of the Pearl Trident and uh, the opponent now with a 4-4 on the board. Another dismember top deck would not be unwelcome. Ugh, Mutavault. So I'm going to play that even though the opponent didn't know about it. So now they have complete information of the hand. I'll just pass back over to them. They follow up with Reality Smasher. Uh, things are not looking so great. Going to have to take 9 damage this turn. I can crack back with uh, 8 of my own. Oh, not he, maybe he's not sure if uh, taking the Master of the Pearl Trident was correct. Well, I'm not sure either. At least it's not a Reality Smasher this turn. Uh, maybe though, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Probably not that uh, Drowner of Hope guy yet. Hopefully he just has a handful of lands like me. That would be nice. Master of Waves is going to be good next turn. Thought Not Seer is going to be good. Um, oh, no. It's going to path my Marrow Regery. Sad face. Okay, so. Cracking the Windswept Teeth, <laughs> taking his first damage of the game at the beginning of my turn four. Pretty slow stuff. Get to basic planes. Going to exile the Marrow Regery. No problemo. I'll get another island because I don't have enough of those yet. Um, did not happen. Come on, island. You can do it. Let's put that cavern back in there. Tap that island. Shuffle, shuffle, shuffle. Go to the draw step. Come on. Kira is decent. Um, pretty decent indeed. So let's not forget to play my land for the turn. Let's see. I'll attack first. Right. After Kira, though, I really have to draw some some creatures. Because I feel like the Drowner of Hope is coming. At least Kira will help protect against him sacrificing uh, Scions to tap my creatures. Well, on the plus side, if the opponent plays another Thought Not Seer, he's not going to get to exile anything. He can only choose non-land cards. Quite a drawback on that guy. Okay, opponent with access to 5 mana. 
What did he do last turn? He didn't do anything last turn. Played a land. He's going to attacks again. I can deal with this for now. Another land and probably Drowner of Hope now. Maybe, I don't know, two matter reshapers. Okay, basic forest, Drowner of Hope, fair enough. Kira uh, doing some good work in this situation. Since Drowner has a really powerful ability, he gets to sacrifice a Scion to tap my creatures. He'll have to sacrifice two to tap a single creature of mine. Now I'm really tired of drawing lands. Spreading Seas is a decent start. I think I'm going to um, kick things off either by hitting the temple or by hitting the plains. Now he doesn't have any access to white mana if I take him off the plains. Kira's already holding up his um, his path to exiles. So, one, two, three, four, five. Hmm... I think I'm going to take him off the plains, only because if he draws a path to exile, he can sacrifice an Eldrazi sign to crack Kira's shield and then path him. So I'll start by turning him off of white mana. Draw a card. That was a good card. I don't think that I played my land yet. No, certainly not. Um, so I can play my land. Okay, let's do a little bit of math here. Assuming he doesn't have Reality Smasher, he can attack for 11 next turn, which is pretty fierce. Uh, for my part, none of these guys have flying. Um, none of these guys have flying, so I could attack with Kiro. If I activate um, Mutavault, I'm going to be able to... Let's see. I doubt he's going to sacrifice both Scions here. So... If I, if I activate Mutavault and attack, it's going to be for 8, which puts him on that nice 2-turn clock. Do I want to leave any blocks up? Reality Smasher goes straight through uh, with Trample. Pretty rough. I don't know if I can play around that. So I'll start by putting the Lord out here. Yeah, and I can't see how I don't just attack here. I have to, I have to play to my outs. Island walk online. Um, well, I've got, I'm gonna go to uh, ask if I can go to attacks because he might want to tap somebody down before I get to attack. As I mentioned, he'd have to sacrifice both science. He'd have to sacrifice both science just to tap one guy. All right. So one more final calculation. If I only attack with two creatures, he'll go down to 11. Next turn, if I draw another lord, he'll be able to swing for 11 plus 2. That'll be nice, but I can't count on that for sure. He's already exiled uh, two of my lords. All right. Well, I have to hope that he doesn't have the reality smasher. We haven't seen it yet. So attack and go to damage. I'm going to take 8, uh, going from 16, I'll let him know it's 8. Okay, so the opponent at 8. Kira doing some work protecting my guys. As long as the opponent isn't presenting lethal, I'll have no reason to block anything. Okay, so plays an untapped hallowed fountain, going down to six. That uh, leaves me with onboard lethal, even if he manages to get rid of Lord of Atlantis. Not if he has blockers, though. He's taking his time. 
So I guess that means no reality smasher. So the shield has been broken on the Lord of Atlantis. And now I assume he's exiling my lord. I'll get another island, increasing uh, the chances that I hit something good on my turn. Is he going to swing with everybody? Well, that would be a little bit silly. Probably just with the two big guys, I imagine. That would effectively turn off Dismember. Dismember, um, if I'm able to cast it and not die, is great because it gives me um, an extra draw step to hit something like an Island Walk Lord. Just uh, close this thing out. So we're in attacks. The opponent's not casting any Reality Smashers this turn. It looks like taking him off of planes was probably the right thing to do. All right, he's being uh, really conservative here. Follow up with a Birds of Paradise. Island Walk Lord off the top wins, I think. <laughs> oh, man. Well, he's got three blocks. Good blocks all around here, so... Rearrange my stuff a little bit. Go ahead and play my 10th land. Actually, it's not that not not that far away from 10. It's uh, 8 at this point. I can attack with the Kira. I don't think I'm going to be blocking with her in any event. If he attacks with uh, the two big guys next turn, I'll have to double chump. And then he'll be... Well, at, this po at that point, maybe I'll want to double chump with Kira. I mean, sorry. <clears throat> no, I can't attack at this point with anything other than Kira. Just because uh, they'll get eaten. Silver Gill or Mutavolt will get eaten. If I attack, he blocks next turn. I can block one. Maybe if I. Hmm. So, Master of Waves would have been a really nice uh, draw this turn with Kira on the table as extra devotion. I attack and he swings with both guys. I can chump with one. Assuming he he's probably going to chump with the birds, but if he doesn't, he goes down to four. Uh, in which case, if I draw an Island Walk Lord, I can activate Mutavault and get in for three more. It's still not lethal. Uh, if he attacks next turn with these guys, I can block with Kira and hope to peel a. Well, then he Path to Exiles are live. But he's uh, already used two of them. Uh, I think I just have to pass here. Unfortunate top decking of a land there after I've already uh, played eight of my lands. All right, maybe the opponent has nothing just like me, just a really strong board. I have a feeling Dismember is officially going to be off the table after this turn because he's probably not going to be so conservative with attacks anymore <sighs> all right so in this spot it i guess we just block the bigger one i could double block the thought knots here in which case i'm going to get to draw a card off of him but then uh, i'll only have mutavault as an attacker i think i have to chump with kira here hope he doesn't have removal and then rip an island walk lord And if he has removal, good for him. He's got, he, you know, he'd have what he needs. Currently, I don't have what I need. Just pl playing to our outs. Actually, damn, all right, so he's got this Scion now. Mm, Should have thought about that. So um, another Drowner of Hope is pretty good. I think that'll do it. I'll just go to my draw step just in case. So we had chumps with Birds of Paradise against Kira anyway. Silvergill. I 
guess uh, Master of Waves might give us a little bit of time, but we don't get there. All right, going to game three. We'll be on the play this time. I did mulligan to six that game and had a couple of unfortunate draws toward the end. See if I can get a little bit more lucky in game seven. Uh, sorry, what am I thinking about seven? Game, <laughs> game three. Where did that seven come from? I guess I was starting to think about my opening hand next game. Okay, very solid. All right. Both wishing good luck, very nice. If he opens with an Eldrazi Temple, I'm going to spreading seize that thing. So fast. Breeding pool um, for ancient stirrings. Engineered explosives. I have a, a well rounded hand here, so. See what I draw this turn. Harbinger is going to be good as we go along uh, through the game with Ether Vial. Hmm. So I can play Spreading Seas here, take him off green, draw a card. Um. Hmm. If I play a Lord now, I won't be able to play a Regiary next turn to make a mini bigger. Mm. I think I'm going to wait on Spreading Seas just because um, Eldrazi Temple is just a much better target for Spreading Seas. Man, having a curse catcher here would be really nice. Maybe he's short on lands. Maybe he predicts the curse catcher. Maybe he has to make his land decision before. Yeah, there it is. Pretty smart play. Well, so we're not going to see a matter reshape or anything uh, this turn. We know he has explosives in hand and potentially needs access to white mana. And there it is. Okay, so um, if we want to, we're going to be able to slow him down with Spreading Seas this turn. Let's see if we draw a land this turn. Uh, another Marrow Regery. So we're going to have a um, good excuse to go up to 3 next turn. Okay, um, so yeah, we'll start off with uh, Spreading Seas here. Another Master of Waves. Can attack with the Lord. It's going to take two. So, um, regardless of the fact that I can put a Harbinger into play this turn, it's probably going to be correct to take the Aether Isle up to three, save the Harbinger to get the cast tap trigger on a creature that he plays this turn. Although he might run out um, Engineered Explosives this turn. That card does a lot of work out of the Eldrazi sideboard. I think I've seen it in, uh, the, I think I've played against this deck three times now. And I've seen it in every single uh, post sideboard game. All right, so he's gonna play this Temple Garden tapped Short. Uh, blue green. Short. Yeah. Obviously. And um, the question now is to play the harbinger or not to play the harbinger. I can push a lot of damage. Uh, this little guy will die when he pops the explosives inevitably, 
but bringing in Rejury, I'll be able to swing for um, four for seven next turn. Harbinger is going to get to swing for four damage. Uh, more valuable that way, or more valuable... Yeah, I think damage is the way. The way of the Merfolk. Curse Catcher is solid. I'll get to put in two Rejuries, actually, and swing for even more damage. All right, here we go. We are attacking now for nine this turn. Sixteen down to seven, I think. All right, and that'll be it. Etheral will get to go up to two next turn. Uh, sorry, up, uh, up uh, to four next turn. I have to think the opponent's going to crack this engineered explosives right now. Slowing down his development. He might be able to crack the explosives and play um, a path to exile. And if he doesn't have another land, I'll be able to counter that with the curse catcher. For people who doubt on Mirror Rejury, I just have to say again why? Why are you doubting on this guy? He's pretty incredible. So the opponent's going to start by popping this thing. I will unattach my spreading seas, and these guys will go to the graveyard. Maybe a matter ah, displacer. Okay, so I think any merfolk off the top is really good to tap this guy. Not any merfolk. Two drop merfolk or one drop merfolk. Yes. I'll get two. Oh my goodness! I get two trap triggers here. So um. I'm going to put this guy in right now, I think. This is fun. <laughs> All right, one, two, three. Four tokens for that. Um, then I'm going to get two tap triggers here. I'm going to tap this guy. And I'm going to untap this guy. Oh, I guess he's scooping it up. Yeah, it was quite the hand. So yeah, I was lucky to have a diverse hand between my 1-drops and my 3-drops and the 4-drops. The opponent had two engineered explosives, but um, let's see. Did the spreading seas slow you at all? So I'm asking if... Um, if the spreading seas slowed him down a little bit, and and he says, yeah, um, yeah, being on the play as Merfolk, if we get an explosive hand like this one with all these regery taps, uh, it's really hard to deal with. Um, so I'm just going to ask him uh, what he thinks of it so far. Oh, this is his first game with it. All right, well, that's... Uh... <laughs> well, I'll wish him good luck. And um, so he's been playing Eldrazi in Taxes, which is another cool deck. I've said it before in other videos, but I really, really love these new Eldrazi. Uh, they're so well-costed and uh, just so packed full of value. It's amazing. Um, so thanks, guys, very much for watching, as usual. Uh, please leave any comments you might have. Uh, subscribe if you're not already. And I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks again. Bye.